You're listening to Secret Sonics, a podcast exploring the creative side of music production. Hello and welcome back to Secret Sonics. I am your host, Ben Wallach. My guest today is Ben Didolo. Ben is an Atlanta slash Nashville based producer who's been working in the industry for over 13 years. Signed to Prescription Songs, his styles range from funk to pop to hip hop and everything in between. The multi instrumentalist has toured the world only to realize his passion has always been between the speakers in a studio. My buddy Jonathan Friedlander, who's already been on the show, recommended I reach out to Ben to join, join us on the show. And uh, so it's a pleasure to introduce Ben to the show. Welcome to Secret Sonics, Ben. Thank you. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so tell us a bit about how you got started getting involved in music production. I picked up the electric bass back in college, started writing songs, joined a few bands, uh, wasn't really able to write songs as easily on on the electric bass. Um, so I picked up uh, a little bit of guitar and piano, and uh, that was cool for writing songs, but I wanted to um, – something drove me to, to being able to, to produce an entire song. Uh, so I ended up picking up uh, Ableton. That was way – the learning curve was way too steep for me, so I went back to GarageBand on my first Mac I ever had, started making beats, doing hip-hop R&B beats, and the artists I was working with loved them. Uh, got to Atlanta, and somebody recommended that I made the jump to to Logic, and it's uh, been working with Logic Pro for about 12 years, and it's been off to the races since then. Amazing. I'm also a Logic user. Um, nice. <laughs> not that it, they're all good, right? But whatever. Anyways, it's it's all different palettes for for painting. I use a uh, Logic Logic Pro um, X for for most of my production, uh, and then for for vocal tracking, mixing, and mastering, I use Pro Tools. Uh, mm. I've been also using Pro Tools for for about a decade. Any live tracking, a lot of times, if I'm recording bands or stuff, I'll use Pro Tools just because of the audio uh, workflow. But yeah, Logic is is great. But yeah, everybody always says, well, what's the best? Um, and or is Logic the best since you've been using it for so long? It's the best for me, but you know, to each his own. Yeah, when it comes to that stuff. One hundred percent. Was there a song or album that really opened your mind to the possibilities of what could be accomplished with production? Ooh, ooh, that's a good question. Like, uh, yes, the light bulb moment. Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. Ooh, great one. That is my number one album. I know a lot of times I ask people, what's your favorite album of all time? And a lot of people say, well, I can give you my top five or top 10. I can't really pinpoint it. Dark Side of the Moon is my favorite album of all time. That's amazing. I, th- I feel like there's something about that record that music producers just gravitate towards. A lot of people that are like deep in music production just like will reference that as like a sonic, because it's, it's such a sonic soundscape, right? It's like a... It really is. It really is. And and after watching some behind the scenes documentaries, how they made it, um, it it's a it's one of those albums where it's a it's a concept album. Yeah. Um, it the the writing is immaculate. Um, the production is immaculate, and the experimental phase of it is immaculate. Everything's so great. It's not like they had to sacrifice the the writing and the quality for to go experimental or to you know hit home or to to sell a bunch of records you know, they, they were able to encompass all that in one record. Yeah. Um, and still and sold like crazy. A, yeah. Yeah. That was the, when, uh, money was the first song that really, uh, skyrocketed them into, uh, stardom and the, the fame that was the, the one record. Um, and yeah. And, and not even, know, not, not even in four, four. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's in, yeah, it was in what three four? No, I think it's five four. Uh, I think so. Yeah, except for except for the one of the solos. I think it was the second guitar solo. Um, what's his name did not want to play in five four, so they it breaks down to four four in one of the solos. Right, right, I don't right. Think it's the sax solo. The, no, I think the guitar solo. I think you're right. I think it is a guitar solo. Well, we're we're really uh, trying to get the memory juices uh, getting in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so so. You work with all kinds of artists today. Uh, what do you look for when you're trying to see if it's going to be a good fit working together? Uh, first and foremost, it's uh, personalities and vibes. Luckily, at the point that I'm at, I'm very blessed to be able to work with um, ca- the caliber of artists and musicians that are, um, you know, at the same level and, and have the put in the same time that I have. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's you know, can you hang out with them in the room for six, eight, ten hours? 
that's what it comes down to. Now, of course, I will, you know, check out their music beforehand or, um, you know, a lot of times I get set up with sessions, writing sessions with uh, through my publishing company with people I've never met or heard of. I'll do my research, listen to them. But, um, yeah, it, as far as like returned uh, songwriters and artists and stuff like that, it's, uh, yeah, can I hang out in a room with them? Amazing. Uh, and what do you listen for the first time you hear a song? And that said, uh, do you prefer to hear like a demo or a live performance? Oh, that's a good question. So, uh, and a lot of artists will, sometimes when I'm looking up, when I get scheduled with a session, I've never worked with somebody, I'll get links to uh, both finished songs on Spotify, major releases, um, and demos. Uh, I love I love hearing both. I love to hear finished songs to see where the artist wants to go, assuming that the production mixing mastering actually got what they were had in their head yeah um because as a producer i'm just trying to get what's in their head uh to translate through the speakers um but i love hearing demos too because the demos obviously are raw uh and that gives me room to um look ahead um i love hearing demos and thinking you know once i hear a good demo the gears start grinding and turning and i can think oh man i could put I could put this on it. I could go uh, live route with it. I could go completely programmed with it. I could do a trap beat to this beautiful pop piano chord progression or yada, yada, you know, and that's what's cool about demos is to there's a lot of open space. So usually I, I do like actually hearing both. I like to hear what they've done and I like to hear where they want to go because the old me and I'd study about this online. A lot of people, when they have a chance to work with an artist, they start uh, writing songs, instrumentals, uh, and they listen back to their old catalog. Well, if you're listening to a song from a year ago, that song was probably created two to three years ago. So now you're three to four years ahead of where that song was actually written, mm -hmm. which is where the artist is. So I used to write songs, make beats, instrumentals for rappers and artists in Atlanta. And you know, I'd pitch them stuff and they'd be like, that's kind of cool, but what, what's the new stuff you have? That sounds like my old stuff. And so that's where mm. you got to think progressively ahead of, you know, what they're, where they're trying to go. Wow. I love that. You have to have, be sort of like a prophet in a sense and say like, okay, this is kind of where they're coming from. This is like a direction I could see them going in. How do you, how do you do that? Yeah. The, the best way is, um, and I, from what I've seen online, most, uh, most producers prefer this way too, is to work with, get actually get up with the artist, um, sit down with them in a room and just hang out with them for a little bit because of today's schedules. And thankfully because of today's technology, you don't have to be in the same room in the same city, in the same country, obviously yeah. with somebody to, to work with them. But, um, and a lot of the work I do is remote, um, where I'm just sending instrumentals and people will record and send it back. Um, and that can be really cool, but there's something about sitting down with an artist in the room with them and, uh, you know, talking and saying, you know, what have you been listening to lately? Uh, what have you been doing lately? Where have you been vacationing lately? Um, you know, what kind of mood have you been in lately? Um, and then you'll hear people saying, well, um, something happened. I just got married. Uh, I'm in a super awesome mood or, um, man, I'm super bummed out about the election and I've been down and out for, for two weeks listening to sad songs or it's been raining and I just keep looking out the window of the car driving like in a movie with the rain going down and very melancholy. So I'll, you know, create around that just to, the type of vibe that people have been in, not just the musical stuff. Oh, cool. I like that. Yeah. And that, that helps out uh, a, a lot. That's a that's the best way to really pinpoint about what I've seen to to actually lock in with an artist and get something down that they they like. Kind, like, like kind of like them out. telling you a story and you kind of envision the story and like yeah, that's awesome. Hundred percent. Yep. Do Do you have a go to instrument or sound big that you use to get the ball rolling? Uh, what spur of the moment? How does it How does it begin? Omnisphere is one of my favorite in the box VSTs since uh, soft since. I usually go straight to the uh, polyphonic uh, old school analog sounds is what I'm going for. If I'm not writing on an instrument, if I'm writing on like an instrument, acoustic guitar, electric guitar is probably my best to write on. I am learning piano. My wife is giving me lessons. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> so as a bass player um, who's been doing it for a minute, it's, and I've actually, um, a few of the past few songs I've written for, uh, for sync um, have been actually written on bass. Um, oh, dope. and it's kind of like, uh, black keys, uh, white stripes type of like, um, gritty blues rock, mm -hmm. um, with, with cool eclectic 
productions and I'll start those off on bass and oh, dope. I only, only started doing that over the summer, which was super exciting because I used to just put the bass down and I'd save the bass for last, even after vocals sometimes. Wow. A lot of my instrumentals don't have bass lines on them just because as a bass player, that's my main instrument and the bass has to be fucking popping. Yeah. So the bass has to be jamming. So I would lay some ideas down and be like, well, that's not cool enough. Nobody's going to be like, man, that bass line is jamming. So I'll just mute it, delete it, whatever, and then save it. Also, I like to do. You know, Paul McCartney is famously recorded bass last on like the Sgt. Pepper's record. Like, really? Yeah. That was like his, that, that record, like everything else was done. And then he would go in the studio and do the bass, just him and Jeff Emmerich, like late at night recording just. Yeah, that's. The, uh, I did and, not know that. And I will the go bass, back and listen. With and that's that why mind. the bass is like so prominent on that record, also, and so it's so creative, also. That's cool. Well, the bass is essentially what glues what everybody says it glues everything together. It's melodic, but it's also also it's very melodic, but it's also very uh, rhythmic. So yep. it's it's got to be locked in with the drums, but it also be has to be locked in with the other instrumentation. So that's why people say it it glues together the drums and everything else. Um, I like doing it after because, yeah, especially if instrumentally wise, you can glue everything together. But then even after like the vocals and other production, um, you can stay out of the way with the vocals um, and then throw in all the ands and ifs, the the licks and stuff. And you know where all the space is to to go off on, you know. Oh, yeah. I love that. That's that's brilliant. Cool. I feel like I, was, I cut you off. You're about to say something. Oh, well, you were asking about recording um, or writing, and I said I actually have been writing with bass, but I also use I also use, um, and maybe you shouldn't put this on the on the podcast. Um, no, I use a lot of splice too. I use a lot of sampling. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And big big cheat code of mine. Um, uh, and it's, I was it's actually not just talking, you, man. It's everybody, right? Yeah, I know. Today's, uh, but I, I was working with a buddy um, in Atlanta recently, and he's like me. He's a multi instrumentalist, producer, engineer, um, but he's also like a singer. He's been a front man for a band. Um, and I was talking about using Splice, and he was like, he's not against sampling, um, but for him, he said that he would sometimes rather uh, just do it himself. And to which I was like, well, I, I love doing stuff by myself. I love um, creating, writing a song all from natural instruments, um, you know, where I'm playing drums, keyboard, uh, guitars, bass, acoustic guitars, electric, where I do the mixing, mastering, all that stuff. But there's also something about sampling where I know how to do all the stuff, but sometimes when I'm sampling stuff, especially when it's like splice chains game with, you know, the royalty free sampling, uh, but there's something about, uh, taking a sample that I definitely could have made that myself. But in and so the way I explained it to him was um, even as much knowledge as me and him and I have, uh, it would take a lifetime to come up or it could, we could go an entire lifetime and never write a progression like this one sample that you could grab from this pack, drag and drop it into your doll. And all of a sudden you have this inspiration going, you know, yeah. that something you might not have, not saying that you, you can't come up with that or write that, or get those tones in that order, but you might, we don't have enough time in our lives to do all this stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you would, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't come into your brain automatically. And, and if it's inspiring you to do other things by yourself, like it's just, uh, it's just like a, it's just fuel, man, you know? It, exactly. Yeah. The inspiration. Um, and, the, and that could be a drum sample. Um, it could be a kick sample, a snare sample, because sometimes I'll just do, um, you know, that and make my own kits out of, out of, that and then all the way up to you know sampling a whole or taking a whole keyboard sample progression you know and then going from there um i had a buddy uh that used to take samples actual like samples um from bands like you know motown sample or something yeah. like that he would make a beat around the sample finish it and then remove the sample um and then he would uh, go in from there. He would oh, use the sample cool. just as a vibe to start it off and then take the sample out so that he wouldn't have to worry about, you know, royalties or anything like that. That's really cool. That's really cool. I, my, uh, pre, there was a previous guest on the show named, uh, Howard Feibush and he was, t he does kind of like indie, indie rock vibe stuff. And he, he was saying how you, you can make a really cool vibe if you like do a whole track around, like, let's say an acoustic guitar. And then once you've done the whole track around the acoustic guitar, you just you just pull that acoustic guitar out, and then you see yep. what like what the skeleton, or like what, what it sounds like without the skeleton, basically. 
And it's just like yeah. completely Yeah. It's cool because vibey. you can especially especially if you are comfortable mostly comfortable and familiar with an acoustic guitar, uh that's going to be your easiest way to write, which it probably is for me. Um but I don't always want an acoustic guitar sounding track. Right. So, but but sometimes there's stuff on piano that 